Hi there. In this video, we'll look at multiple choice problem number six from the AP course description. Um, pretty straightforward problem. We're presented with a formula for a function, and we're asked to find the value of the derivative when x is zero. Okay, so in order to do this, uh, we're going to just need to go over some backgrounds uh, with the chain rule. All right, so the chain rule just says the following. Um, if you take some input x and run it through a chain of functions, process f, now run the answer through process g, now run that answer through process h, producing a final output of z. All right, we would like to know what's the rate of change um, of the function that takes you from the beginning of this process all the way to the end. All right, and the chain rule tells us how to do that. Well, each one of these processes has their own individual rate of change. So f has a rate of change um, at x, and then g has a particular uh, rate of change at this particular input y, and h has its own rate of change at this particular input w. Okay? And what the chain rule tells us, let me just make some room for this next step, um, what the chain rule tells us is if we want to get uh, the rate of change of the whole process all in one step. You know, remember, the process begins at x as an input, and it runs through f, a little circle is for composition, then it runs through g, then it runs through h. All right, and we want the rate of change of that composite formula h composed with g composed with f, what's the rate of change um, at input x? And the chain rule tells us the answer. So in particular, the chain rule says if you take each of these individual rates and multiply them together, then that will give you this uh, rate of change of the overall process. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply that knowledge to this specific problem. All right, so why don't we just diagram out what's happening, and before I do anything else, um, I just have to ask, who's being squared in this problem? Somebody's getting squared. Well, the answer is uh, the expression sine of 3 minus x is getting squared. So I think it will be helpful, I'm going to clean that up for you, um, I think it will be helpful just to rewrite the problem in that way, just for the sake of clarity. All right, so now we're going to ask, uh, what happens to x? first. And the answer is for this particular problem is that x goes into the formula 3 minus x. That's what happens. Whoops. And so what we're doing there is we're feeding x into this function, 3 minus an input. Okay, and then what happens after that? Well, the second stage is we feed that um, new input into the sine function. Okay. So we're going into the, did it again? Maybe I'll learn on the next time. I guess we'll see. Uh, we go into the sine function, and that produces the sine of 3 minus x. And finally, we're going to take that input and put it into the squaring function, and that completes our chain. Okay, so that goes into the squaring function and we get all of that stuff squared. Sine of 3 minus x squared. Okay, and we want the rate of change of that whole process, so let's just walk through step by step. Okay, rate of change of 3 is 0, and the rate of change of this function is negative 1. So we can just write the rate of change is negative 1. And I'll clean up this notation. Okay, next process. What is the rate of change of the sine function? Answer, the cosine. All right, and we're going to plug in this input right here. Whoops, this input here into that. Okay, and let's go to our final process. Um, the rate of change of Something squared is 2 times the input. And here's our input that needs to go into that. 
sine of 3 minus x. Okie doke. And once again, the chain rule simply tells us uh, that we can find the answer by multiplying each of these components together to form a product. All right. And let me go ahead now. Uh, with that sort of conceptual groundwork laid, let me go ahead and do this problem in the way that I would do it sitting down to take the AP exam. All right, and we'll see how to choose the answer for what is f prime of zero. Okay, so for this purpose, I'm just going to clean up my screen. I'm going to set my timer. And let's see if I can do this. Can I do it uh, counting up? Let's see if I can do this in uh, under three minutes, hopefully. I'll give myself four just in case I go over. On your mark, get set, and go. And I will take the time uh, to just write this out as I did earlier uh, for clarity in squared form. I do think that's worth the time it takes to write that. Okay, so formula for f prime of x. Looking at the squaring function, I'm going to do 2 times the input. The input being the sine of 3 minus x. Next, I'm looking at the sine function, the derivative being the cosine at that input. Input is 3 minus x. And lastly, the derivative of 3 minus x is negative 1. Now I need to go and plug in 0 for x. So this is f prime at 0. So we get 3 minus 0, which is 3. 3 minus 0 is 3, and there's our answer right there. Uh, we may need to reorganize for purposes of choosing the answer, so I'll multiply 2 times negative 1, which gives negative 2, sine 3 times cosine 3. Negative 2 sine 3 times cosine 3 is answer choice B, and there you have it. Uh, in under a minute and a half, you should be able to do this problem using your knowledge of the chain rule. Okay, and just flipping over to the point of this question, always, always, always you should try to be categorizing these problems so you can understand how it fits into um, the topic outline, how it fits with the course as a whole. All right, so under computation of derivatives, we have that students should be able to apply the chain rule. Hope this video is helping you uh, to learn how to do that, and we'll see you next time.